my car broke down in the middle of Kansas, if all places, I didn't even see Dorothy or any of her friends. I was supposed to go to Kansas City and meet a friend who is both a master sommelier and a master of wine. Only three people in the world with these distinctions. We were going to have dinner and drink some fabulous wine. But since I was broken down, he suggested that I have beer instead. And so this is exactly where I went. Recommended by Doug Frost, Master of Wine, Master Sommelier, Defiance Brewing Company, Hayes, Kansas. Hi, welcome to In the Library, uh, Binging with Bacchus edition. I'm excited to be at Defiance Brewery here in Hayes, Kansas. And this is Dylan, and he's gonna take us around and tell us a little bit about what they're doing. What's so special about Defiance? Um, so as far as Defiance, um, you know, our brewery located out in Western Kansas, um, definitely don't have like the foot traffic that a lot of bigger cities do as far as, far as tap rooms, breweries in general. Um, that, I think that's why we stand out a lot. The beer, the beer styles that we're working on, you see more of like on the East, East Coast, West Coast. Um, we still kind of play around with tr traditional style of brewing, but we like to experiment a lot with just processes in general of making beer um, and seeing how we can um, just make a unique beer every time we make beer. What are the, s the styles that you're most proud of? Um, we do a lot of IPAs. Um, we do a lot of fruited sours. Um, and then we go back to, we just released a new uh, wheat beer. It's a new year round, Kansan, um, which is kind of a, you know, you know, homage to where we're at and, you know, uh, Western Kansas, big wheat state, um, but yeah, other than that, we there's so many different varieties of hops out there that it's kind of crazy what kind of flavor profiles you can get out of some of those now. Um, yeah, a lot of the processes, we taught ourselves a lot on how to utilize those hops and save money and make more beer and hopefully make a better product. Fantastic. Uh, Doug Frost says there's a lot of complexity to this beer. And it's not just all hops or all fruit mm -hmm. or all one kind of nuance. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your complexity. Well, I mean, we have um, we have an imperial stout that we run uh, biannually. Um, so that's a 10% imperial stout, with, uh, coconuts and coffee. Um, and I can buy some to bring back to my wife. Yeah, for sure. She's going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've used that beer as a base on a lot of other... Um, Experiments just like barrel aging or adding, you know, coffee, uh, coconut nibs, vanilla, coconut, you name it. We've toyed around with the different adjuncts, additions to that one. Uh, yeah, you know, like I said, we have our wheat beer, we have an English mild. Um, you know, you don't really see English mild style really anywhere, I mean, hardly. Um, so that was actually our very first beer we ever made. That's a homebrew recipe. Um, obviously, it's been tweaked over the years, but. Um, you know, we have our IPAs that we kind of fluctuate through throughout the year, and we recently just started doing a um, kind of a, like a draft and a package uh, distribution. So we focus more on certain beers, just hitting tap rooms, bars, restaurants, and then our other like canned varieties. We like to get them out to that we get more distribution through that, so people can. You know, there's a lot of varieties out there. Do you make any any lagers or pilsners? We've made pilsner once. Um, for us, you know, lagers do take up time. They, you know, times money. Um, we have toyed around with. We have a little three barrel pilot system. We've played around with them on there. Um, but yeah, as far as production side, we've only produced one pilsner at this point. What about uh, Belgium style? Belgian, yeah. Um, so we've done saisons um, that we've sent out with the package. Um, other than that, we've done, you know, uh, we did a Belgian triple not too long ago. Uh, I'd like to try that. It's yeah. gone. Is it yeah, still yeah. here? No, no. That was one of our test batches. We got a little, like I said, we got a little three barrel pilot system. So that allows mm -hmm. us to kind of toy around with mm -hmm. the recipes and seeing what we like and what we don't like <laughs> before okay. we, you know, scale it up on the big system. <clears throat> Sounds like the way to go. Uh, all of our malt, malt is stored upstairs. We have an auger that goes up into the hopper. 
I was really amazed that in a small town like Hayes, there was no shortage of equipment at Defiance. They have several four-barrel warm fermentation tanks, eight-barrel fermentation cold side tanks, uh, which run premium. They have expanded fermentation tanks to add variety, to do more seasonals, to make more one-off beers. So for a small college town like this, this is really wonderful. So now it is time to drink up before you watch the football game and after the football game. A little more variety. Um, I, I drink a lot of the different types of beers, and I know the people that purchase our beers the same way. Where do you buy your grains and hops? Um, majority of our grain comes from Brewer Supply Group, so up in like the Minnesota area, um, as far as like our base malts. And then we like to use a lot of imported malts. So Wireman's a big malt that we like, Crisp, um, Simpsons. Um, so those are all obviously in the UK side, Germany and everything. Um, our hops, majority of the hops that we use like for our IPAs, you know, from the Yakima Valley up northwest. Um, we've toyed around with a few uh, New Zealand variety of hops, Australian hops. Um, they're just hard to get a hold of and don't, they're not cheap. <laughs> um, but all of like our other kind of like tamer hops, I'd say, um, usually are American hops or German hops. Where did you learn to brew? Uh, I'm self-taught, just started homebrewing. Um, at the time, Hayes was not very good on having a good beer selection. Um, so my brother actually homebrewed and he lived in Seoul, Korea, homebrewing. So he was kind of in the same boat. Um, so I just said I can try to make my own beer, I guess, that I want to drink and then kind of got addicted to it and here we are now. <laughs> Fantastic. This is Kansas, our American wheat beer. Hi. So this one is definitely kind of on the lighter side, a lot of wheat, um, so you get a real good kind of caramely biscuit note to it. The first beer was the Kansan, which is a mellow wheat beer with gentle hops. It creates a fresh bread nuance. 14 IBU, so it's, it's very calm, yeah. it's very easy on the palate. Yeah, the hops we use, so one throws a nice little spice to it, the other one kind of more so on like the citrus side without being too like, aggressive hop. It's very nice and complex. It's clean, easy drinking beer, 5.7%. It's up there for a wheat beer, but so it'll it'll uh, get you down the road pretty well, <laughs> make you feel the love of Jesus, so to speak. Okay, but it's also it's very very pleasant and easy going down the palate for those who have sensitivities to bitterness. The second beer is called Big Money. It is a mimosa of the prairie. Defiance calls it Big Money because it's like a breakfast IPA. Let me tell you something. That was a really nice integrated we actually had a, treat. This is a difficult beer to make because of the balancing of the citrus and the hops. Yeah, I mean, we and and it seems very nicely balanced. Yeah, we didn't want to be too sweet, um, too juicy, but still have enough in there. Um, and it still has nice moderate bitterness to it. So, so it pulls you on both ends, and down the middle is this very, very pleasant integration of the two. The third beer was Defiance's English Pilot Ale. It had nuances of caramel, hazelnut, chocolate, almond that ran across the palate beautifully. It was a beautiful beer. It was luxurious. A little caramel on the back palate. It's very nice. And then finally, the fourth and final beer was an Imperial Stout called Fuzzy Knuckles. It had a plethora of malts and flavors. Hey, Jimmy, this one's for you. So there's a plethora of different malts in this one, adjuncts. So lots of, a little bit of coffee on the nose, a little bit of chocolate. Caramely. This is a beer that you definitely want to smell. Yeah. This is fabulous. Yep. A very nice stout. 
I recommend to anybody if you come to Hayes, Kansas, or want to make a special little trip. Uh, there's a lot of culture here, a lot of history, and uh, Defiance Brewery is the place you want to come. Defiance has great beer, great atmosphere, great people, and is a lot of fun for a guy whose car broke down in the middle of Oz, Kansas. Defiance Brewery, this is the best brewery in Hayes, man. I mean, this is where you come. 